I'm Ryan Drapella. I've been a full-time woodworker for over 10 years. I spent close to half a million dollars on nine different CNC routers. From budget machines like these, to the more professional workhorses like this, all the way up to this $300,000 dual head CNC behind me. And the lessons I learned along the way completely changed the way I viewed CNC routers forever. Now, let me explain. All CNC's are pretty much exactly the same. Let me get both of these machines running and I'll go into that a little deeper. So as these machines run, I do want you to take note whether it's these more hobby CNC's that y'all probably know a lot about or $100,000 CNC's, they're all pretty much made of the same components, right? You have a gantry, a spindle, linear rails, some motors, very basic stuff. If you look at this machine, you have a gantry, a spindle, linear rails, and a motor. When you look at a $60,000 machine, they're all gonna have the same stuff, right? And it's a CNC, so of course you're gonna have some type of computer controlling it. And I think that's so important to note because once you build that foundation of knowledge about CNC's, whether it's this Shapeoko right here or this alt mill, they're both the same. I like the Shapeoko for the learning side of it, how easy it is to use, how simple. I like the alt mill for the production side of it. Now, this too was kind of surprising to me as I bought more and more machines was the learning curve to actually understand how to use each machine was slightly different, right? And so the very first machine is gonna be your hardest, right? It's gonna take you months and well, I'm about 10 years into it, so about 10 years to figure it out, right? And so that learning curve from each different machine is going to take a while, but that initial learning curve is by far the worst. So if you're new to CNC, you're thinking about getting into it, it sucks, but it will get better and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, one other thing that I learned whenever I started with, you know, a more hobby CNC, that Laguna IQ that I started with, it was so easy to load, make a quick change on the program. But as I progressed and got different CNCs, it got harder and harder to press go and to modify jobs. And so what I love about hobby machines is that it is so easy to make a quick change to adjust. So by the time you're finished with a program to the time you're cutting out the product, it's like that, right? It's very quick, very simple. Same thing on here, right? The hold down is so simple on a machine because on the larger machines, if you break them, you're going to have a ton of money and cash tied up. I broke apart on my shop saber the other day. It was $5,000, which is more than each of these machines cost a loan just for a single part. You gotta be thinking about that when you're looking at different machines and maybe upgrading. That was something I didn't understand. Whenever you have a larger machine, you have to feed the animal. And so they're gonna be cutting product out a lot. And if you're thinking, man, I wanna get a bigger CNC because it's gonna be faster, you have to understand that it will probably be faster, but you have to really feed that beast. This Shape Oko just got done. I can take it off really quickly, easily, because it's a hobby CNC. I can put the next job on and continue working. On a larger, more industrial CNC, that's going to take a ton of time. And if I wanna make a quick change, it's very easy. Now, once again, like I said, my learning curve was about three months before I can like, I felt like I wasn't gonna break something every time I click go. But then as I progressed, you know, I built that pyramid of knowledge. Now pretty much all CNC's only take me about a month of using before I feel like it is a second arm of mine, right? Before I start dreaming about how I'm gonna use them. And so if you are watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and a friendly thank you. Now, on to the next CNC. Now, once I got into more industrial machines, like this shop saber right here, right? You have a lot larger bed, a bigger spindle. Once again, same thing, a gantry, spindle, work table, computer, but it's just a lot bigger. The very first thing I thought was the coolest was a vacuum table. And the biggest lesson here is that 
vacuum tables are really cool. They're gonna hold down. Oh, wait, they're kind of complicated. Make sure you have it on. This guy sucks. <laughs> but vacuum tables will hold down like crazy. But sometimes you're running jobs that that smaller CNC can hold just fine. And so we now have this job where we have to hold down this board. And a vacuum table is not really meant for holding down boards like this. It's more meant for holding down sheet goods so you can do these large passes, right? Because most industrial machines are made for the cabinet industry. And so whenever you have jobs like this, I actually think it's easier to hold them down without a vacuum table on a smaller CNC. Now this is a longer program, so I'm gonna click go so we can start running it. But it, it does, it is different, right? And so I thought vacuum tables were gonna be the best things in sliced bread, but I quickly found out that they're only useful for about 75% of the jobs that I'm doing. If I'm doing other jobs, like whenever I need this gasketing right here, right, I have to like make a fixture and put it on the machine and all that crazy stuff. I would much rather just use a smaller machine for that. But the fact that this machine has this tool changer right here does save a ton of time and tool changers are amazing. I highly recommend them, so watch this. I love that. As this is programming, we're gonna have multiple tool changes in here and there's gonna be multiple different feeds and speeds. There's gonna be things that I can do to improve this tool path. But the thing is, whether it's a industrial machine like this or that hobby CNC, you are never gonna have the perfect tool path. It is impossible, right? Like it's impossible. So as I watch this run, I wish I could increase a step over just a little bit, right? And increase the speed just a little bit. How much does that actually matter, right? In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter that much. Where I'm saving time is the automatic tool changer, is the ability to kind of vacuum this down. But just know that if you have a small CNC or a large one, you're never gonna have the perfect program. No program is ever gonna be 100% right. And so I used to stand by this machine for hours tweaking something and it just never worked. Now, whenever I did upgrade these larger machines, the interface got really, really simple. So I did like the interface on this mid-size industrial CNC. And I do think ShotSaber does a very good job of their interface. You'll hear about a bad interface in a little bit. Now, the maintenance that I have to do on this machine is way more difficult than the one I have on my hobby CNC's. So I have grease zerts all around this thing. I have this bearing. I mean, look at this ball screw right here. This is a massive ball screw. The servo motors right here, massive, big, heavy gantry. And in the back over here, you have vacuum pumps. This vacuum pump also takes a ton of maintenance. This is a 15 horsepower vacuum pump. Whenever you do these tool changes, you have different collets and different things you have to do here. And so the maintenance, like 10X from a hobby CNC to this larger, more industrial CNC right here. And that's another lesson I didn't really think of along the way. Now, if you're curious on what this is cutting out, it's gonna cut out these parts right here. I can't really tell you what it is. It is a top secret project I'm working on with another YouTuber. If you think you know what this is, leave a comment in the comment section. And if you are getting value from this video, definitely give us a like and subscribe. The last thing I will say on these industrial machines, I don't have a dust collection on right now, because if I did, there's a certain bit that's gonna knock it off and we can't have that. So we have to run this program without dust collection on. So dust collection does suck, even on industrial machines. But because this machine can handle a lot faster feeds and speeds, 
when you have that smaller machine, they don't matter as much because you can never run them to the optimum amount, right? But on this one, they do matter a lot more because you're running your machine a lot more, so you're using a lot more bits. In this shop, I go through a little over $50,000 worth of bits a year, and so that's why I have them on CIC Workshop. Because I buy so many, I'll just let you buy the same ones that I use in my shop as well. Like, we're running this quarter inch bit right now at 250 inches a minute, doing a quarter inch pass. If I ran it any faster, it would never necessarily get up to speed because this machine is just so big. So all those nuances still matter. The vacuum table doesn't matter as much as you think. Woo, woo, it sucked up my, uh, my shirt. Oh, baby Jesus. I'm glad I'm wearing my brown pants, let's just say that. But the maintenance on this machine is a lot harder. Vacuum table is really, really cool. Automatic tool changer is really, really awesome. But it got a lot more expensive. So now let's head over to my big machine. Now that brings us to our last CNC right here, this dual head industrial CNC that actually costs more than most houses. And what you can easily see is the gantry right here, the spindles, the work table, and the computer it runs on. So no matter if you have a $3,000 CNC, a $500 CNC, or a $300,000 CNC, they're all the same, right? It's baffling. So once you understand all that stuff, you kind of understand them all. Now, what I didn't understand whenever I bought this machine is I thought because I was buying a really expensive machine, the computer system would be really, really simple. This computer system right here is the hardest computer system I've ever had to learn on a CNC. And I think this is where they start teaching it in college and why you have to go to school to kind of learn all this stuff. And what's even crazier is that it doesn't even show a preview toolpath on here. So $300,000 CNC does not show a toolpath preview. It's crazy. Once again, I'm not from that background. I'm self-taught. And so this was a massive learning curve for me but it still took me about two weeks to three weeks to really figure out. So it's gonna have a lot more tools on it. This makes things a lot more complicated to program, to touch off. If you forget something, it's not gonna be good, but you can see kind of the benefit of this. Bigger machines are definitely faster on certain things, but they're not faster on everything. So right here, I'm cutting out cutting boards out of panels, and an industrial machine is definitely better for that. But if I was doing something like a V-card, when you kind of take into consideration the time programming it, the extremely complicated setup, it's not gonna be faster. But something like this is a lot faster, right? You're never gonna be able to run this fast on a smaller CNC. Another thing to note, dust collection still sucks. It always sucks, it may always suck. I even have 10 inch hoses going to this machine and the dust collection is still not enough. Dust collection will always be a thing. So the cut quality on these bigger machines is just gonna be so much better. But once again, the computer system is so much more complicated and I'm using the CNC to cut out this very simple project because it's what it does best, right? If I wanted to engrave something, I would use my small machines. There is no point in engraving something on a machine this big because you just can't make it worth it, right? Like this is 10 times faster than a smaller machine, but when it's engraving something, it's not 10 times faster. So now this is done, comes to the front. Here's another point. When I say they're a pain in the butt to program, I don't want this onion skin on here, right? So for me to go and take this off, which I need to do, is gonna take about 
30 minutes of programming to just be able to do this. And I have to mess with this computer a lot right here. And so literally just to cut a little bit deeper is going to take probably an hour to get that thing set up. So getting this larger machine, even though this cut quality is phenomenal, it still takes a lot longer to program and figure all that out. And you can't really see what you're cutting out. Now, I use this machine a lot. It is a workhorse, but that's just something I didn't understand when getting into it. This is not easier. It is only meant to do production run stuff, which takes a lot of the fun out of it. And that brings me to my last point, is that every time I bought bigger and bigger machines, and maybe you aspire to do that one day, I personally ran them less and less. And, and, and that's a tough pill to swallow if you're looking at maybe upgrading different CNC's or starting a CNC business or something like that. Because you're growing, because you get the bigger CNC, you now are running a business. That means you're pressing go a lot less and having to train somebody. So this interface and this machine right here, which is by far the most expensive, I have ran the least out of any machine. I have probably clicked go on this machine less than 50 times. That machine behind me over there, probably a thousand times. Smaller machines, tens of thousands of times. Maybe, at least, at least 5,000, right? So when you're thinking about that and really wanting to like grow or aspire to have one of these one day, if I'm telling this to my 20 year old self, my 21 year old self, do keep that in mind. Do you love CNC or do you love business? Do you love making things or do you love designing systems? I happen to love all four of those things. So this business is the perfect fit. But if you just like pressing go and you get goosebumps when you have this beautiful cut and this stuff right here is like crack cocaine, it is awesome, then you're in the right alley, right? But just be thinking about all these things. So I hope this video helped you. I hope this helped you on your CNC journey and you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And remember guys, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.